Inspiring you to set the marketplace ablaze in partnership with an awesome and limitless God. This is the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast, and this isn't business as usual. Here's your host and Chief Fire Igniter, Shay Bynes. Welcome back to the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. This is your host, Shay Bynes, and our goal here is to inspire you to operate your business completely yielded and in partnership with our awesome and limitless God. Today's guest is Dory Staley, drum therapist and founder of Next Stage Drumming. And yes, I said a drum therapist. You may be unfamiliar with this being a thing, but it's a thing. Dory is actually a return guest on the podcast, and I invited her back to share more about her journey of learning to work by the power of God's grace instead of grinding things out in business and to talk about the beauty that she found in aligning with what God is doing. And by the way, I'm including a link to my first interview with Dory in the show notes because there is such a powerful healing testimony in there that many of you are not going to want to miss. But let me go ahead and get out of the way so that you can hear this great update conversation with Dory Staley. Listen in and enjoy. Dory Staley, a.k.a. Dory the Drum Chick. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Today. It's so great to see you again. Yeah, it's really good to see you again, too. I love doing update conversations with previous guests. Also, you're part of Igniter's family. And so it's so good. I'm going to make sure we're going to give a little bit of context for those who um, haven't had the 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 honor of hearing the first interview that I did with you back in, what do we figure out? June of 2018? Yes. Oh my gosh. So it has been almost three years and, uh -huh. and you have just such a wonderful story. Um, I want to give a little bit of background first and then let's go forward. All right. So Dory, at least give in a nutshell, give the, the 30 second version of what it is that you do in business currently right now. Sure. What I do is something known as drum therapy. I use drums, hand drums specifically, to help people focus, feel better, and find their joy. Transforming lives, one drum beat at a time. <laughs> there you go. I love it. Yeah, so it's, it's very unusual, but it's loads of fun. Yes. And so you shared in our first conversation how you actually received healing in your body through drum therapy yourself. So, can, so I think it's important for people to hear this, this part too. So can you give just a little bit of how, like what you were experiencing, you know, what you're experiencing in your body and the healing that you experienced? I want them to hear that just in case. Sure. Really quick. Freak accident. Bicycle dude came through a crowd, took me out. And so I experienced extreme pain in multiple body parts, sprains and tears mainly. I was scheduled for three surgeries and an invasive procedure on my spine because I had shooting pain thanks to the fact that the accident triggered a rare disease. Thought I didn't have any hope of ever being the same or moving forward as a business owner, much less a drummer. I couldn't even figure out how to do that without being in pain. So I gave God a shout out and I said, look, I need some help here. What do you got? Because I got nothing. I don't know how I can go on. And the words that I heard as clear as day were, Dory, use the drums. And I thought, oh, on me. Oh, <laughs> you know, the plumber always has a leaky faucet, right? <laughs> I never thought, duh, of using the drums on my body. I yes. Like everyone else and seeing remarkable results, but kind of thought, well, that's odd. It, you know, that's interesting. Yes. Oh, it never really dawned on me that this could really work, especially when you've got a rare neurological disorder and there, oh, by the way, there is no cure. Right. So, so God figures he's going to show up in a big way because if he can fix this, I mean, without any question of the doubt, then that might really wake me up. Yes. <laughs> so I did. I drummed for my life every day for two weeks, only about 15 minutes to a half an hour using two special types of hand drums and boom, Dory was completely fine. Hallelujah. And you have been in that. How many years ago was that? That was in 2014. Wow. So here we are six years, seven years later. Right. 
healed. And nobody, Amen. Nobody can guess my age, which was really awesome. And got a milk back for all it's worth. You know? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I just tell them drumming keeps me young. But it's because of the fact that I still have a tremendous amount of energy. I move a lot when I drum and speak and everything else, you know, Italian heritage. I got the hands going all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up with me, people. Right. So, so to be slowed down like that and to be so derailed, it really shook me to the core because I didn't know who I was anymore. What am I going to do? I had all these drums for Pete's sakes. I've got drums in like just about every room of the house. <laughs> and so here you are still fast forward. You are still doing the drum therapy, but there is a story. There's the story behind the story that I yeah. want to really talk about with you, because when we had the last conversation, you were branding, you knew that you were doing the private drumming therapy and all of that stuff, but a little bit. A little bit. But God had given you a word. What was the word that God gave you? We can heal the world one drum beat at a time. We can heal the world one drum beat at a time. And you know that you're kind of sort of doing this in business, but you were also, you had a lot of experience in other things. And so at that time, you were kind of putting together the pieces like, oh, I book people, you know, I, I book people with music. I also do this drum thing or whatever. Like, how would you describe your your three, I guess your three years ago or so in your business? How would you describe that? It was the most confusing business model that anyone has ever seen, but it made sense to me, right? <laughs> why, isn't, why isn't anyone getting this? Yes, I'm a booking agent and I'm a coach and I'm working with female entrepreneurs and, oh, yeah, by the way, I do this little drumming thing and it's loads of fun and, and it might help you feel better. I was clinging to what I knew and I had Next Stage Entertainment, which was my booking and entertainment agency for years. I could book bands in my sleep. I could do that. I also knew that I can play percussion by ear really well. So I was doing some of that. And bands would call me in, church bands and cover bands. And I was a quick study. So that I could do in my sleep as well. So you always kind of cling to things like, well, this is safe, right? Yes. Now much of a stretch, I can do this. Even the coaching, I was doing some virtual coaching. So, ha, I was using Zoom before it became a thing. <laughs> right. We should have bought stock in Zoom back then. <laughs> but, yeah, so so I was slowly, like, adding pieces, but I was adding so many pieces because I didn't want to let go. Right? And you, it was like, it, God had this invitation before you yes. to, like, go full in on this, uh, on this word that he gave you in right. business to healing through drumming. And so you had to wrap yourself around like the truth that that could actually be a, a thing like by itself. It was so mind blowing because I didn't know anyone who was doing it. I didn't fully believe that it was possible. You know, like you you try to trust God and you say, okay, I'm going to give this to God. And what do you do? You take it back. Yeah. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. I don't see anything happening. So I better go back to what I know and I'll take this piece. And I kept like holding on to everything. Yes. You know, you know type A energizer bunny thing. You know, I got hold on. I got to do all the things. All the things. <laughs> Hashtag all, all the, the things. Actionists. I know how to improvise. I can play bongos and congas and shakers and tambourine and maracas in the same song. So I can do all the things until you burn out and you realize, oh, oh this is not good. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> so enter grace over grind. <laughs> Great segue. Yes. <laughs> so enter grace over grind, which I suspect, I don't know whether you joined Igniter. Did you, were you introduced to the idea of grace over grind because you joined Igniters or they had that? Ha okay. So you joined Igniters and now there's this, this, kind of this new world of, wait a second, there's this grace over grind thing that I can do. So talk to me about the beginning stages of the awakening to that. And talk to me a little bit about the story of how you kind of walked out in business and kind of shifts that beginning stage, not your now yet. Right. So, okay. So I joined this group called KDE and I'm <laughs> finally with other believers. Yeah. Because you have to realize 
that I'm in the Raleigh, North Carolina area, and I know that this these communities exist in different pockets of the U.S. It's the drum circle community, very big here. Not only that, there's a huge new age community too. So I had people who were trying to put me in those boxes. Wait, Dory, you're this, you're this. That oh, that's what you're doing is Christian Reiki. I'm like, what? <laughs> They just didn't know what to do with me. Right. So, so I said, okay, well, let me check this group out. Oh, well, this is different. By this point, I had racked up an awful lot of debt thanks to other coaching programs, you know, credit cards. None of them knew what to put what, what boxes to put you in. I just, you know, the, sales, <laughs> the sales copy was speaking to me. Yes, I'll go for that. Ching. And the credit card would pop out again. And well, that program didn't work. Let me try this one. And I didn't know why it didn't work. Because I'm coming from a different place. I have the Holy Spirit in me. Yes. And that wasn't in any of those programs. Yeah. There was a whole lot of whole lot of spirit this and the universe that and Mercury retrograde and you know, all this other stuff and the law of attraction. And I, I was so confused that nothing was working because their techniques weren't working for me. But when I joined KDE, it was almost like a breath of fresh air because it forced me to be still. Yeah, something yeah. that a hyper drum chick isn't really good <laughs> at. <laughs> I always joke that in my book, ADHD stands for a definitely hyper drummer and I'm one. <laughs> so I thought, oh, God, no wonder I wasn't hearing from God because in my brain, it's a thousand and one ideas. And it's constant chatter. Yeah. I never shut up. <laughs> Ask my husband. <laughs> Poor guy. No cosign on that, huh? <laughs> Poor guy. He's home now. He retired early. He has to like go for walks just to get away from the noise. But yeah, so I, I really had to wrap my brain around this very different way to do business. And I'm thinking, oh, I was running my business in my own strength. Yeah. With this, my mantra really was if it's to be, it's up to me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or fake it till you make it. <laughs> it's the right. credo. You, you miss a beat, don't let the audience know. You just fake it till you make it. And I'm back in. Yes. And you try to control everything because you think that you are responsible because, after all, this is your business and it has your name on it. It never dawned on me that no, this isn't my business. This is this is the Lord's business. And and Jesus should be my CEO and he should be in the driver's seat and not me trying to drive the train all the time. <laughs> so so when you slowed down and you said, okay, I'm gonna try look, look, I'm gonna keep moving in this, but I'm gonna slow down. What were some of the things that the Holy Spirit was really speaking to you about in the beginning that made that started to make some pivots for you. Well, when I started reading the book, Grace Over Grind, and getting more into the program and doing the exercises that were given to us, it really forced me to be quiet, to be still in the morning, to write things out, to journal. And here's a fresh or refreshing concept to wait to hear for a response. <laughs> so this is, you know, what about this? What about that? that I really wasn't waiting to hear back from God. If I didn't hear anything, I just kept going. Okay, next, let's see what else. And I realized that my journal was just a lot of business complaints or business ideas. And there was there were no epiphanies. There was no, no more divine downloads. And I thought I need to get back to square one and go back to those days in my home office where it was just me and the Holy Spirit guiding me because I had nothing else left. And that's when God finds you. So you're like, I'm going back to the basics. Were you willing to like put all the things aside? Like, did you, were you able to say, I won't assume anything. Let's just, I just want to hear what you have to say concerning all of this. Were you, were you there? Slowly, it took a while and it took some prodding. And thank goodness that there's so many really cool people in KDE <laughs> that would either reach out privately with a word, I'm like, oh, wow, that was good. Or, you know, through the sessions and things, things would yeah. pop up. And I, I had some mentoring with Dr. Tony and yeah. different things would pop out there. Yeah. And 
I had to realize how God sees me, right? Yes. Now I'm going to get all choked up. Hang on. I got it. Okay. And I had to get back to the little drummer girl way back when, when I wanted a drum and I was told girls don't do that. Right. And I was wanted to go into business later on. I was told the same thing. Yes, I'm that old back in the day um, <laughs> when I was in high school and they said, women don't go into business. You should become a trilingual secretary because you speak several languages. So my whole life, other people were trying to tell me what they thought I should do. And every time I had something unusual surface, an unusual talent, or later on, I realized unusual, unusual spiritual gifts. I was told, you can't have that. You can't be that. But now I can say, oh, yeah, actually, I can, because God said so. Yes. Yes. That's but so yeah, good. I, I had but to you had to know that he said so first. And yeah. that's what happened when you got focused in on just like intimacy with him. Just like, yeah. I want to know what you say about okay. me. Right. That's so really I good. To, I had to embrace uh you know, the, the me <laughs> that God wanted me to be and what he saw in me so that I could fully activate my gifts and talents and let those good vibrations out. Yes. Just like light tap, tap, tap. We, and I was actually a little bit afraid because people would see me speak at workshops and go, oh, girl, you got a whole lot of something in there. <laughs> you know, they move their hands around like my, my stomach, got a whole lot of something in there. And it needs to come out, but and it's going to be really powerful when it does. And that, yes, that scared me though because I thought I remember a conversation I had with you like that. <laughs> oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Yes, and, and so it was having that community of believers. Yeah, and other people talking about their spiritual gifts, and other people being okay with you know, you know, here's a message for. You know, I would do things like that, but I would hold back because I didn't want people to think I was weird, you know? Right, right. How much longer did it take for you to then say, now then, therefore, I trust that this drumming therapy thing can be a thing, like a full business. Like I can really do this and I don't have to hang my hat on the things of the past that I did, but I can actually move forward. Was that, I mean, it, was that the key for the letting go or was there something else along the way that helped you make that break? Well, I think once I started seeing more powerful results in other people and even people who were coming to, I have these free group classes that are fully sponsored by my town park and rec department. So major props for them for seeing that this could be a cool thing. They pay me, but it's free to participants. So people would come out to these free classes. And after just one class, they would say, oh, I feel so much better. I came in with shoulder pain and now it's gone or <laughs> All kinds of things. And I yes. thought, huh, well, that's interesting. But that was just the tip of the iceberg. But I did start to think, I wonder what would happen if I only did one thing. <laughs> what would it be like if I dropped everything else? Well, obviously, it makes it a whole lot easier to focus, number one. Number two, your brand is a whole lot clearer. And if you're only talking about one, maybe two things, because I still mention coaching a little bit, because I still do, you know, I'm an ADHD specialist and that right. kind of ties in. But yep, so one by one, there they went. Next stage entertainment, gone. Rock the next stage, gone. A Facebook group for musicians, gone. And that <laughs> one for 10 years. And slowly starting to drop things, peeling away the layers. Because if you think about it in a way that those were like protection for me, you know, yes. protective layers, preventing people from seeing the real Dory. Yeah. Because if they see me, will they be able to handle it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can they handle me? So once you stripped all the other things away and you got focused in on this, tell me some of the goodness that's taken place if you've, as you've partnered with God and focus on the thing that he, that now you're like fully aligned where, where he would have you to be. So then I finally moved ahead and let next stage drumming stand on its own so that it could breathe. And so could I. <laughs> 
And it really made it a lot easier because now I didn't have 50 million social media accounts that I had to monitor and post in and do all the, all the things. And I was able to say, okay, this is my lane. I've created this lane because I'm the one and only certified drum therapist in the state of North Carolina and the South. Oh my goodness. And the whole, in the yes. whole state and in the South. Yes. Wow. It's a, it's a program up in New Jersey. So I'm, I know for sure I'm the only one in North Carolina. I'm right. Or sure I'm the only one in Southern states as well. Wow. So when people say I've never heard of that, that's because I'm like, <laughs> I'm the only one. <laughs> so, right. So I thought I'm going to claim it. Let's go. It's only been a bazillion years that I've been in business. I mean, I started the entrepreneurial journey in 1995, finally decided, yeah, we're going to file for an LLC. That was January of 2020. And what happened in March? Boom. Pandemic. <laughs> there you go. Now what? So that was my next little test. And I said, I'm not giving up, though. I am not giving up. I almost gave up the first time when, you know, the bicycle dude almost took me out. I'm not giving up now. I've come too far. I've invested too much time and money and effort and, and research and everything else because I had developed my own techniques. I didn't realize that I've got between 30 to 50 techniques that I created based on whatever different people needed. And I kind of put them in categories. I said, well, it's now or never. I'm 62 years old. So I am not retiring early. I feel great. I've got loads of energy. You're refired. <laughs> Story 2.0. Yes. <laughs> so I knew I could either panic or pivot. Right? Yeah. So I said, well, I already know how to use Zoom. Let's see how we can use this for music. So I had some private clients and a handful of drum students, you know, who want, reg uh, they're getting regular lessons on the full drum set. Please don't ask. It's really not my favorite thing. I only do it for <laughs> certain people, but I kept them all. And I said, we're just going to move this online because they were coming to my house. And my husband said, no way. So I said, all right, let's see if we can do this virtually. But I also prayed to God. I said, all right, this is quite a challenge here because drum lessons, that's one thing to do. But drum therapy through the computer, they can't feel my vibrations because the science, a lot of it is in the sound waves and also the movements and things like that. But it's feeling the sound waves go through you is what really, really makes people feel really good. They always say, oh, I, I feel like butter. You know, <laughs> I, feel, I feel so calm. And I didn't know how it would work. And I said, if we're going to do this, if we really are going to do this, Lord, then I need to see some tangible results in a really big way. So we can say without a shadow of a doubt that this was drum therapy that made the difference and not anything else. So what do you right. got? Okay. I did a, a special, you know, you figured you let people know I'm doing virtual things. Hey, anybody who signs on for a three month program, I'll send you a free drum. And so I have a, an endorsement deal through the Toka Percussion Company. Thanks, guys. <laughs> um, who who really saw that the, you know she works with kids. She's, I specialize in kids and adults with ADHD issues. They like the fact that I I work with a lot of special needs kids and adults, and they thought this is great. So I mean, it was like overnight. Yes, here you go. Welcome to the talk of all. I did was ask. So talk about grace over grind. Yes. All I did, somebody gave me this suggestion. You might want to reach out to these people. They have new ownership. They have an education arm. I reached out and said, hey, by the way, this is what I do. I get an email back. What can we do for you? Welcome to the Toka family. I went, I love what? it. I mean, that's unheard of. I even had a musician friend remind me that, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not what usually happens. He's like, this is not, this is not normal. <laughs> this is not normal, Dory. How did this happen? You were not a touring musician. Only touring artists get endorsement deals. I said, well, there you go. Well, there's the favor of God. <laughs> you don't ask, you don't get. What can I tell you? I used to tell my fans that all the time. They would ask me, how do you get us like so much money and extra perks? I said, you don't ask, you don't get. Right, right. So, uh, so we got that. And then the Drums and Disabilities Organization. Oh, man, they backed me up big time. I got hit by trolls. So talk about a little spiritual warfare. So in all of this, I'm getting hit left and right. Uh, that app, what is it called? Next door. Yes. 
Well, I made the mistake of doing a little, you know, add on about my ADHD programs. And man, the trolls came out of the woodwork. Oh, on your sponsored ads? Yes. Well, yeah. it was actually just a regular ad. It wasn't even sponsored. I oh, okay. I wrote the copy myself and, yes. and they came out of the woodwork. And I was so rattled. I contacted the founder of Drums and Disabilities up in New Jersey. And he's, I'm, a, I'm an Italian, but I don't have my New Jersey accent anymore. But it can come back in a heartbeat. So here you go. He's up there. He's he's got the whole thing go. Wow. What are you? What are you kidding me? Oh, what are you talking? No way. No way. They can't do that to us. No, no, no. I'm good. No, this is what we're going to do, Dory. We're going to write a press release on your behalf. They got a problem. Tell them to call me. Wow. I got you, sister. So. So he backed you. He backed me up. He wrote a press release and he said, and that's how you silence the trolls. So That's now so I good. got backing from an international yes. organization, Drums and Disability. I got the Toka Drum Company. I'm moving forward. And what happens the minute I get these new private clients? One gal, was uh, she wanted to sign her kids up, but they were like, nah, no way. She said, Dory, I'm going to take the sessions. You know, I could use it too. First session. She has one session. I check in with her. She says, oh my gosh, I had instant clarity after the session. All of the business things that I was stuck on were totally clear. Boom, boom, boom. I was cranking out programs. I was writing stuff up. I have never been so organized in my entire life. Wow. Well, there we go. (laughs) But wait, there's more. (laughs) So then enter a cute little six-year-old nonverbal child with autism. And I'm thinking, oh, we just upped the ante here. The goals of the session, because I always ask my private clients, what are your goals? And then I create techniques that'll help with that. And when I'm in the middle of a session, of course, I get all these divine downloads and And I will say things that need to be said that come directly from the Holy Spirit. So they get a lot of extra encouragement and stuff. But I thought, oh, this is a real challenge. Well, I can help him with anxiety and stress relief. I can help with anger issues, which a lot of both special needs kids and foster care kids have. I've done that before. Piece of cake. I did not expect, Shay, that after three sessions, he would start talking. (laughs) Wow. He started uh, saying a couple of words and then a couple more at the pre next sessions and then a couple more and then putting sen- uh, two word sentences together and I asked the mom I said just to be totally clear was he doing this before drumming she said no every once in a while Dory a word might pop out but that hasn't happened in a long time and she seems so calm meanwhile I'm freaking out right <laughs> <I'm> thinking, <laughs> you're like this is awesome <laughs> So I'm trying to be really cool and professional. Wow, that is really amazing. But meanwhile, I am fighting back the tears. Yes. And, you know, we we click off the, the session and the virtual session. And I cried like a baby. And you I, ask God, you ask God for confirmation. Yeah. You asked him, like, if I'm going to do this, you know, in the midst of a pandemic, you know, something that I usually do face to face with people. I mean, if this thing's really going to work, like, God, like, I need you to show up. Like, I need you to show me. And boy, did he show you through the computer, I'm through the I, computer. And I was crying and my my husband's hugging me and I can't I couldn't stop crying. And uh <laughs> no distance in the spirit. <laughs> uh, he just said, you, know, you have been waiting a long time for this. That is so good. I love that. There's one thing that you had shared with me before we had hit record that I wanted to bring up because I think it's important too, is that in the midst of, you know, you were talked about how you were, people were like encouraging you to retire or just hang it up or, you know, whatever, or, you know, you've tried this or whatever, but God was still like, you were still getting vision. You were still getting ideas. You were still getting like insight from the Lord concerning this drumming. Like he's, he was still speaking. Yes. Yes. And I was having all of these great dreams and and visions and I was writing things out and drawing them out and things and water. There was also lots of, every dream had flowing water in it. Dr. Tony kept reminding me, that's the Holy Spirit. Okay, good. (laughs) And, and also, you know, direct messages a couple of times where 
don't worry, I'm going to be sending you lots of people. There was a dream where we were out on my back deck and Jesus was pointing to the stars and he said, do you see all the stars up there? Yes, I do. That's how many people that you're going to bless. I'm going so to good. see them. They're coming. They're coming. And I kept thinking, well, when, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's, it's like that. those signposts, like those, those, those encounters with God are so, are, are so helpful along the way in the midst of what people might be saying around you, what you might be seeing with your own two eyes in front of you or whatever. It's just like, and you were saying earlier, like, I'm not getting any younger, you know, people around you are retiring and stuff like that. But it's like, no, God is still speaking. There's still life all over this thing that you're doing. There's life all over it. So good. I still have loads of energy. And you got, that nobody, is clear. Nobody ever guesses my age because I move around so much. When I'm yes. And I'm so animated. And, and I just really love, I love drumming. I love what I'm doing. I love seeing people smiling. That's like one of the best side effects right there. If you could make even like your hardcore business guys, like doing some lunch <laughs> and learn, I don't know about this. And all of a sudden they start laughing and they're, they're just, they feel so much lighter. They say after. Yes. That's so good. Okay. I have one other question for you. So now that you, you, you know, you made the pivot, like you got focused, you even made a pivot in the midst of the pandemic in terms of, you know, your ability to how you do your business and all of that stuff in your sessions, you're like listening for the Holy spirit. He's guiding and leading you in the midst of your, your conversations. So I guess my question to you is, what, if any, that comes to mind has been a surprise in this journey of doing this business by the power of God's grace and in this focus, has there been any surprises that you've experienced in terms of what you've learned about God or what you've learned about yourself or what you've even learned about the things that you do and how you show up? Yes, I've learned that hustling will just sap your energy. <laughs> so if, you're, if you're not sure if you're hustling or not, if you're feeling exhausted, or your mind's going in a thousand and one directions, you probably are hustling. But when you go with the grace of God, and I love, because you use rhythm a lot, I love that. The unforced rhythms of his grace. There we go, right there. When you really go with those unforced rhythms, it's a lot like when I'm drumming. Since I play by ear, I've got to wait for the beat. You know, I'll be playing with the band and the lead guitarist might start us off and I got to wait for it. And there it is. And then you just flow with it and you go. And now you're, you're part of the experience. You're using your gifts. You're not forcing it. I don't read music. I can, but I choose not to. I just go with what I feel. And that's why I move a lot when I drum. And so if I'm drumming in church, thank goodness, I, you know, I'm with a, a church that we're like... I said, is it okay if I move? Oh, go for it. Go for it. And I Freedom reigns in this place. <laughs> you know, you're just not sure. How far can I go here? Right. And they wrote, they, the first time I drummed with this one church, they said, oh my gosh, I don't, they said they've never felt anything like, so we released something. And so again, if you hold back, you're not really helping anyone. You're also, you're going against what, what God was trying to do and what he gave you, whether it's your gifts or your divine assignment. Number two, number three, I wrote a book during the pandemic that I wasn't even thinking of writing. I wrote it like years ago and put it on the back burner that nah, it's not any good or it's not the right time or it's not the right message. Well, I started get, revisiting that and it turned out to be a completely different book with a completely different title and subtitle and it's out there now. <laughs> <So> <laughs> But well, what is it? What's the name of the book? Rise up and rock. Activating, Rise up and rock. Activating your God-given purpose. And you, Shea Bynes, and lots of KD ears are mentioned throughout the book. So oh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. You got to give credit where credit's due. Right? <laughs> a little link to Grace over Grind, too. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, girl. We're taking care of things. I love it. I love it. No, this is this is really good. I love I love the uh, just seeing God's movement in the midst of all of it, whether it's with your clients, whether it's uh, in the encounters with you to get you to the point of uh, releasing and letting go and grabbing grabbing hold of you know the vision for for the drumming business. 
uh, full out. And even walking that out, the other thing that stands out too is that willingness you were talked about how what you're doing is actually pretty, it's pretty unique. It's not like there's a ton of people doing it. And the people who are doing something that's kind of similar to it are kind of operating in a different kind of spiritual, they kind of have a new age kind of vibe thing. And so, so it is different. So your willingness to, to uh, blaze a trail when it feels lonely sometimes because the people around you who are in your space are not in your same spiritual focus. And, and even with what you're doing with therapy, it's like, kind of like it, but not like it at all. Right. And so walking that out and being willing to be courageous in the midst of that and knowing God's with you, it's just all good. I love it. Dory, the drum chick. (laughs) Thanks so much. Well, you know, you never know once you finally trust God and release. I talk about my faith now all the time. I don't hold back. I figured you either like me or you don't, right? <laughs> you're not, you don't have to be in, in that position where you feel like, oh, everyone, no, everyone doesn't have to like you. People will follow you if they're feeling that they resonate, you know, what you're saying or what you're doing resonates with them. And I've had numerous people reach out from all over the world saying, I'm so glad you mentioned your faith and they start asking questions. I have a couple of people waiting in the wings who are thinking about drum therapy. Now that I can do this virtually and 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 all this. So it's good. If I kept quiet and if I held back and covered things up, like covered my faith up or covered my gifts, I don't think I would be reaching as many people, and certainly not in a powerful way. Right. Would you just you know coast along, scratching the surface because you know that's safe. Yes. <laughs> right. You go, oh, play it safe. Don't want to ruffle any feathers. Yeah. After you get to be my age, you're like, well, take it or leave it. <laughs> getting up to 11. <laughs> Buckle up, people. Because <laughs> here I am, fully me. Let's go. <laughs> oh, thanks so much for sharing, Dory. How do people get connected with you further? Where do they go? They can head over to my website, nextstagedrumming.com. And you can even sign up and get a free gift. I did a quick little video, how to beat stress and boost your mindset in five minutes or less with some fun techniques. You don't need a drum to participate. And and that'll get you some free tips as well. Uh, Just shoot me an email, Dory, D-O-R-I at nextstagedrumming.com. You can find me on Facebook or Instagram, Next Stage Drumming. YouTube as well. So I'm very good. She's everywhere. Go find her, Dory. Thank you so much for sharing. And I love, love, love this update so much. So thanks so much. (laughs) Thanks so much for connecting. It's so great to see you again. I love doing these update episodes. They're always so good. I'm here with Mr. Phil Vine, CEO of Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur. How's it going, Phil? Hey, love. All is well. Good, good. good people's. (laughs) <laughs> all right so let's talk about some standouts for you from today's episode well i'll tell you what right out the bat when you guys were kind of doing kind of the the update from what she talked about previously the first thing that jumped out at me is how god uses the foolish things that can found the wise talking about you know using drumming to heal bodies that is outrageous you couldn't tell anybody <laughs> in the world that that was the case but God does what he does. Yes. Yes. That actually kind of reminded me of the, there was a really awesome testimony uh, that was given by one of our previous guests on how she received healing through a rebounder, the trampoline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay. What else? What else stood out? The next thing that stood out is, you know, it's impossible to hear from God unless you sit still sometimes. Yeah, you know, she was she was just sharing how, you know, it wasn't until she got still that she started to get um, some divine downloads from God. And I'm like, isn't that just how God is? <laughs> That's good. This has been a, a um, this has been a topic that I've been talking about a lot in interviews. So it's like something that a lot of people ask me about. And one of the things I've been sharing is the importance of leaving space so that you can hear God, like giving yourself that margin. And so not overpacking your day, like back to back to back to back to back with a bunch of activities, but actually being really intentional about leaving gaps 
and time, even if it's short gaps, even if it's just a half hour, you know, whatever, but not packing our day so much that we're so constantly doing that we don't have a time to actually intentionally just be, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I find sure. that there's just so much goodness in those moments that either prepare you for the next thing you're about to walk into or might be something that helps confirm something from the last thing you did or something completely different. Mm-hmm. But, you know, guy works in those in those spaces, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I would say that the the last thing I wanted to bring out is um, there was a theme in there about God wanting to take you back to your first love. You know, she mentioned how, um, you know, after she slowed down, you know, and she and she yielded to what God was trying to have her do. She could see the connection of him taking her back to the first love. What was why she started drumming in the first place and all all the rest of that goodness. So I thought that was a good theme. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I love that too. Just that idea that he cares about the things that we care about. And if we allow ourselves, if we'll trust him, then we can get we can get aligned with those things. And if, if we understand that he's the source and everything and everyone else is a resource, then we won't rely on those other things that we've been involved in and just get in alignment with what, what God's up to. That's good stuff. I dig it. All right. So, Mr. Bynes, before we let everyone go, um, let me hear you. Like, I'm always doing the share on Firestarter School. So I'm actually going to pass the mic to you to just share your heart concerning Firestarter School. People who are listening to this podcast and saying, man, these are inspiring stories. This is good. but And I really want to get further connected into the heart of being a kingdom driven entrepreneur and how to really walk that out in a practical way in my business. So what, what do you want to say to the people? Well, what I want to say is, is like I say before, and and my wife has reiterated multiple times, I call Firestarter school, the basic training of kingdom driven entrepreneurship. I mean, there needs to be a starting point in everything. And the big part of starting at Firestarter School is you you get an opportunity to really hear the heart behind what the movement is all about. And um, without being connected to the heart, you can't really you you can't really advance a movement, right? And so we we need your help to advance this movement. And so you need to get connected to what the heart of the movement is all about. And so that's where you get it started is in Firestarter School. Yeah, that's good. So it's basically about three hours of mentoring and teaching around just the practical applications of how to walk this out and how to make begin to make these shifts, mindset shifts, heart posture shifts to align with being a kingdom driven entrepreneur. So you can actually get access to Firestarter School at the price of your own choice at kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com slash Firestarter School. We made it super simple. Just go to kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com slash Firestarter School, prayerfully pick your price <laughs> and you'll get immediate access to the course. Phil Bynes, anything else you want to share before we let everyone go today? No, I got plenty to share, but not right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur family, we appreciate you guys and we look forward to sharing more with you next week on another episode of the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. Take care and God bless. Thanks for joining us on the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, we encourage you to subscribe and spread the word. And don't forget, you can gain access to even more resources, plus a thriving community of fire starters by visiting our website at kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com.